the swift and successful exploitation of the original Xbox in 2002, Microsoft went back to the drawing board and invested heavily in securing the new generation. The Xbox 360 was designed to be totally secure with multiple levels of checks to stop unauthorized code and tampering. This was managed by the hypervisor, the gatekeeper of all things security on the Xbox 360. Like the original Xbox, the hypervisor only allows for signed code and modifying any parts of code or data will not allow any game to run. Unlike the original Xbox, however, no encrypted executable code is ever written to memory. This means no code injection or snooping of memory was ever possible. And if there was somehow a method to bypass either of these checks, the PowerPC based Xenon CPU that powered the Xbox 360 implemented eFuse technology. Its purpose was simple to prevent from downgrading. If Microsoft was made aware of any potential exploits to circumvent unsigned code, they'd simply push out a firmware update via Xbox Live and blow an eFuse in the CPU, which meant there would be no way to ever go back to an exploitable firmware revision. There's even a specific API call in the Xbox 360's kernel to blow an eFuse. Each Xenon CPU was uniquely signed with its own key, so there was no easy way of just replacing the CPU either. These barriers made it difficult for a known exploit to be released as it was simply patched. In 2005, Chris Satchel, who was part of the Xbox Advanced Technology Group, said to the BBC, there are going to be levels of security in this box that the hacker community has never seen before. We've taken security to the hardware level and built it from the ground up. With these discoveries quickly identified in 2005 after the launch of the Xbox 360, hackers knew that they had a huge challenge ahead of them. But like the original Xbox, many different teams worked to exploit many different areas of the system. If we go back to the days of the original Xbox, the system was quickly exploited first via hard modding techniques, mod chips like the Executor 2 and 3 chips, and then later on with soft modding techniques like the 007 Agent Under Fire and Mech Assault save game exploits. But on the Xbox 360, things were a little different. The first area that got the attention of hackers was the DVD drive. The original Xbox and Xbox 360 DVDs share many similarities with the Xbox 360 originally utilizing the XGD2 format, which was designed for the Xbox 360, but based on the original XGD1 format of the Xbox. It was possible to easily rip both Xbox and Xbox 360 discs with a single modified firmware on a PC without too much trouble. Hackers started to take a look at the Xbox 360's DVD drive very closely, perhaps because the original Xbox DVD drive wasn't a main target and generally left alone once the unsigned code exploits were discovered. It was theorized that Microsoft may have overlooked it when considering the security on the Xbox 360 as well. And in December of 2005, a hacker known as The Specialist posed a question to the Xbox hacking community. I was just wondering, wouldn't it be possible to hack the firmware of the DVD-ROM drive so it could play backups? I mean, the 360 will execute a signed game executable only if only it's loaded from secure media. Wouldn't it be possible to hack the firmware in such a way that it would always report the media type as secure medium, so that the 360 would think an original DVD was inserted? This was an interesting question. The hypervisor would not likely be overseeing the DVD internals and its RAM and probably would have no way of detecting a custom DVD firmware at all. The specialist went to work to test his theory out and after a few months of research, development, failure and ultimately success, and with the help of others, he was able to flash a custom firmware onto his Xbox 360 with a now infamous video of a backup of Project Gotham 3 Racing being inserted into an Xbox 360 and booting up. This research started out by exploiting original Xbox DVD drives to read Xbox 360 discs and backup discs. This proved successful without too much trouble, then shifted focus on getting Xbox 360 drives working under Windows. This was trickier, with many challenge response checks in place. The specialist released a small unlock program that allowed the original Xbox 360 drive, the Hitachi GDR3120L, to unlock under Windows and its contents read and dumped. But his theory proved to be correct. By March of 2006, his video and discovery proved a custom firmware could indeed boot backups. On the Xbox 360, a modified custom DVD firmware works something like this. An Xbox 360 executable 
has an extension .xex, and these of course are digitally signed. As part of this, the XEX has information about the disk type. Therefore, any attempt to modify the XEX media bits to allow for a DVD-R would fail as the signature is changed and would prevent the disk from booting. A custom firmware simply keeps the contents of the disk intact, but during the challenge response authentication checks, returns a valid secure Xbox 360 disk. So to be perfectly clear, this method only allowed for game backups and software piracy. It did not allow for the ability to run unsigned code or homebrew. And therefore, there was no way you could run something like Linux via this particular method. And for this reason, the specialist decided to not release his firmware to the public. Microsoft, as you can imagine, were not pleased and they were quick to respond and let everyone know that their security was still not hacked, except it was, albeit in a manner that they had not expected. A spokesman from Microsoft said, the core security system has not been broken. However, it's reported that the authentication protocol between the optical disk drive and the console may be attacked, which if accurate, could allow people to play illegally copied games. Our security team is aware of this and we are investigating potential solutions to this issue. The Xbox 360 platform was designed to be updated and we are prepared to respond appropriately should any unauthorized activity be identified. The specialist decided to keep his firmware private and not release it, but his information and discovery was documented on popular forum at the time, xboxhacker.net. And at the same time as this, another hacker known as Commodore Forever was also working on custom DVD firmwares. The Xbox 360 would launch with two variations of DVD drive, the Toshiba TSH-943 and the Hitachi GDR3120L. In May of 2006, Commodore Forever released his very first firmware for the Toshiba drive and quickly followed it up with the firmware for the Hitachi drive. These firmwares played all backup Xbox 360 and backup Xbox original discs via backward compatibility. In order to install an extreme custom firmware, you first need to extract the existing firmware. The reason for this is that the commands that are sent to the DVD from the Xbox 360 CPU are encrypted and the key is necessary to inject into the custom firmware, otherwise the drive will not be read. The DVD drive also needs to be set into debug mode. This opened up the drive for writing the new firmware, and it didn't take long for mod chip manufacturers like Team Executor to provide easy hardware and software tools to both extract and flash a DVD drive with a custom firmware. Microsoft was quick to respond to this and by October of 2006 they began to bring out new revisions of both DVD drives to mitigate the situation. They began by first replacing the flash chip with a new type so it wasn't easily extractable and removed the debug trigger to get access to the debug mode or mode B as it's known. They also covered previously extractable flash chips with resin making it extremely difficult to read the contents of the flash. But these did not help. Commodore Forever released updated firmwares for the drive revisions, hardware makers were selling better tools and software, and things were getting easier and more streamlined to flash any DVD drive. Microsoft knew they had a huge problem on their hands. So the question now becomes, how does Microsoft detect a backup copy of this disk and not an original if the backup copy is an exact replica of an original Xbox 360 game disk? In May of 2007 with the spring update coinciding with the Halo 3 beta, reports began emerging that users were being banned from Xbox Live, suddenly being disconnected and an inability to reconnect. In fact, Microsoft began banning consoles in retaliation to the modified firmware usage. This was the first of what was known as ban waves, with Microsoft reminding people that by logging onto Xbox Live with a modified DVD drive and a backup disk that their consoles would be banned. It was easy for Microsoft to send challenges and commands to the DVD in order to ensure everything was legitimate. If you look at an Xbox 360 game disc, it has some important areas other than the game data itself. The security sectors, which is a small block of bytes, is used to authenticate the game disc. The disc manufacturing information, or DMI, which like the name suggests, contains information about the disc manufacturer, company names, and batch ID information. The physical format information or PFI is information about where the physical sectors begin and end and the video partition just like on an original Xbox disc is the partition that is read when you insert an Xbox 360 disc into a PC. Microsoft added checks to ensure all of these areas matched exactly what was expected by simple CRC checks to see if there were any differences found and it would flag the console to be banned if there was. 
but it wasn't long before hackers figured out this approach and came up with the concept of stealth media. Stealth Media is all about making a backup disk appear to the Xbox 360 host exactly the same as an original. Although this was already done with the security sector and its challenge response, the extra checks for the DMI, PFI, and the checksums of the XEX and other relevant information and ensuring that the video partition was present and an exact replica of an original disk meant that it should have been undetectable by Microsoft. Tools such as the Xbox Backup Creator would perform stealth checks to determine if your backup copy would be safe from any possible bans. Commodore Forever released updated firmwares known as iXtreme which had stealth media checks once again, allowing backups to pass banning checks on Xbox Live. In the short term, the cat and mouse game with Microsoft continued on. But a second ban wave hit in 2008, this time with the massive launch of Gears of War 2. Additional updates to the firmware started to include jitter detection. This emulated the randomization or slight movements to emulate an actual physical drive. In 2009, once again, Microsoft launched a massive band wave with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. But Commodore Forever kept bringing updates out, tweaking his firmwares and adding new checks all the time. Microsoft released newer Xbox revisions with BenQ and Lite on drives, and the iXtreme Lite Touch firmware was released for these. In 2011, Microsoft rolled out a system update that coincided with the launch of the Kinect, which contained an anti-piracy measure known as AP25. It was unique to each console, and it would not allow any AP25 enabled games to boot if detected. Once again, Commodore Forever defeated this check in all firmwares, and again Microsoft rolled out a new bandwave during the holiday season. XGD3 was the last major revision of the Xbox 360 game disc. It added additional content integrity checks and changed the physical format of the disc, resizing the partitions to allow a dual layer format of 8.5 gigabytes. This meant that it would be difficult to burn disc images because these new partitions were outside the size capacity. Existing Xbox 360s could not read XGD3 discs without an update to the firmware, and any attempt to read an XGD3 disc with a custom firmware would flag the console to be banned. Commodore Forever released the iXtreme LT 2.0 firmware that defeated XGD3 and allowed methods to burn backups on regular DVD dual layer discs without any modifications. For seven years, Commodore Forever released firmware updates one after the other, finally sounding off after the iXtreme LT Ultimate in 2013 staying one step ahead of Microsoft by continuing to enhance and revise features of his firmwares to correctly respond to any challenges sent down to the DVD firmware via the CPU. But drive firmware hacks were plain and simple, used for piracy and backups. The hypervisor and the security system of the Xbox 360 was left intact. Homebrew was not an option. But as we will see in part two, there was another group of individuals that discovered a critical flaw in the system management controller that opened up the Xbox 360 to the world of homebrew and unsigned code. So there you have it guys, that's the story of the modified DVD firmwares that led to the ability to play game backups on the Xbox 360 pretty much from the beginning in 2006 all the way up to 2013. Now this particular part of the Xbox 360 scene is very important and something I really wanted to cover on this channel but the 360 has a lot more to cover on the other side of the fence when we start talking about the JTAG and the exploits that occurred with the hypervisor and that's going to be in part two of this series so stay tuned for that guys i hope you enjoyed this video and this look back at the history of the xbox 360 dvd hacking there's some really cool links i'll leave in the description below on web archive i did dig up some of the old xbox hacker links and you can go through them and get an idea about the discoveries that were being made back in 2006 when all this stuff was going down it's a very interesting read and i definitely think you should take a look if you have any interest in this stuff at all well guys i'm going to leave it here thank you so much for watching this video if you like it you know what to do leave me a thumbs up and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye for now